Holy double special guest episode. This is Flight Check Season 4, Episode 5. We're back once again discussing all aspects of FlyQuest. And this week, we've got a little extra something spicy for you. Not just one, but two special guests joining the show. So excited to break down LCS and how everything's going for the team with our guests. But first, as always, my name is Sandy Toes. To my left and my extra left on the top bar here, uh, my fellow host Knox War in Curly Double Q. Fellas, asking you real quick first, did you catch the show match this weekend? And if so, what were your thoughts? Uh, I did. Uh, it, it was a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that It was is, a very fun time. That is for sure. Uh, an excellent all uh, around. It was it was very fun a lot to uh, see the NACL team uh, scrim like the LCS team and get out some of the spicier, more fun picks. And uh, I'm glad we were treated to a, a scrim match. Is that I, I'm sure that's kind of what it looked like to you guys, uh, New Canuck and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, definitely uh, some wild stuff going on. Uh, but our guest tonight down below, uh, camera off for Richard. He's not. Uh, he's got a bit of a cough. Uh, it's not feeling super great, but still with us, Richard and Nuke Duck, coaches of the FlyQuest LCS team. Uh, both of you, whoever wants to go first, can. What what has the Monday been like for you? Was today a off day, scrim day? What have you guys been up to today? We've been a normal day. Uh, we did, uh, yeah, we ate at 10, had a meeting at 10.30, and then rolled into scrims at 11, and then... Right now, the team is doing the last, going to be doing the last game of the second block now. Oh wow! Uh, so, okay. yeah. Very nice. Uh, d were scrims positive or negative today? We don't have to get into how you know exactly how they went, but it was like good scrim day, bad scrim day. Uh, oh, I mean... it's uh, yeah, actually, it's better. Like, I wanted them to be more like intense today than we were like last day we scrimmed, which was like the intensity was low, uh, in my opinion, and that's not good for practicing. So, <laughs> they're doing, I told them they should be more like try hard and intense, and they are doing better. So, nice, for me, it was good. Awesome. I don't know what Richard thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean. To answer the question in a more broad sense, I mean, if you're asking about results, I mean, results are fine, but that doesn't always mean right. Of course, get the maximum value out of practice doesn't mean right. you always have the most uh, productive takeaways, right? But right. Uh, yeah, today was a pretty good day overall. Well, I mean, okay, there's a question for you guys. The there's a meme out there that I'm sure you've heard that lose is improve. I mean, how how accurate do you think that is? Like, does that hold true? Does losing lead to improvement or some people say it can lead to just spiraling down and not getting anywhere at all i think it leads to improvement like a lot of players are like way like if it worked it worked you know it's hard for them to take anything away in that case uh so yeah for me that's something like that's our job obviously to try to make them understand something even when we win that we could have done something better um, but it's way easier when you lose because it has way more of like emotional effect and uh, yeah, so I, I, I vibe with that, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Richard, what do you think? I kind of feel the same way. I think oftentimes when you win uh, and then even though you won the game and destroyed the Nexus, you are exploited in certain parts of the game or you just have uh, certain weaknesses and the players aren't as uh, attentive to it just because, you know, they could shrug it off. Uh, they ended the match with a win, they walked away happy. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't get the attention it deserves, and right. losing can definitely highlight that. And especially, um, you know, when we lost to Shopify, actually, that that's that's an example of a, you know, a good wake up call. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, especially when you lose to a team that is perceived to be on the lower rung of uh, uh, of LCS teams. Well. We'll get to how LCS is going uh, in just a bit, but do want to ask you guys, and we're going to start uh, this question off with Nuke Duck. So, uh, going all the way back to the end of 2022, so ends on a pretty intense close best of five versus Fnatic. Doesn't go your way, unfortunately. Off season hits, and you end up signing on as an assistant coach with Hundred Thieves. 
what about uh, that yeah. offer uh, was enticing to you at the time? And then, you know, 100 Thieves go through that whole season last year. Now you're here on FlyQuest. Uh, what about FlyQuest made you interested in coming here? Uh, yeah, so um, after 2022, I was a bit demotivated from to play because um, I, we lost the best of five. And honestly, we lost. If I was not like so burnt out, we would have not lost against them. Like we were way better. So, but I was like at the end of the season, I just burned out because I played too much league and playing solo is very like mentally draining for me. So that's when I realized I like. I probably don't want to play anymore because uh, it's just too taxing for me. Like, just, I don't know, just to get burnt out and all that matters is playoffs. And then I don't perform like as well as I want to kind of because of that. So wanted to coach and then 100 Thieves was like uh, kind of like easy choice. Uh, going to NA was like just cool, you know. Uh, I wasn't like dead set on doing like coaching for, for the rest of my career. Uh, but it was like a good uh, offer and with like pretty good people and uh, so that's why I did it and then uh, it went like okay and then now I was again like a bit on the fence but when I saw like FlyQuest roster and stuff like that that's uh, what I chose to come here because I felt like I have like really good players so that makes it way more fun to coach it's way more fun to make like a player go from like 7 to 8 or 7 to 9 than from like a 2 to a 5 like it's just way more like it just feels way better so that's kind of like what I was looking for, and that's kind of what, yeah, what FlyQuest has. Absolutely. Was there any particular player uh, on the FlyQuest roster that you were like, oh man, really want to work with this guy? Uh, yeah, kind of uh, Busu, because uh, we worked together on 100 Thieves, mm -hmm. and nice. he really, um, he is like easy for me to coach him. And he has a very big drive, and he's also talented. So, like, we, I think our relationship was very, like, good when I was, uh, like, head coaching there. Because uh, he also, like, basically, I like to kind of think a bit ahead with drafts. And then I like to, I can tell him, like, hmm, that means that if you're, like, able to play like, this champion, then that might help us. And he really likes that when he has, like, a goal with his practice. Uh, so, that kind of just, we just, like, uh, vibe together pretty well, yeah. Totally. Uh, what was the move from like assistant coach to head coach like for you? Was it, um, you know, was it a weird transition? Was it, did it make sense for you at the time? Um, like what are the differences for you between being assistant coach or head coach? Mm, well, I would say that I'm not very experienced in both roles. So like, this is my, my, like I was head coaching a bit in hundred thieves, but um, I didn't have like, that good experience being assistant coach in 100 Thieves because it was hard for me to like have authority over the players and like when I felt like the players were doing something wrong and I felt like did we, we, if we keep doing this we can't win but my head coach didn't see it the same way so then it was very hard for me to like change anything mm -hmm. uh, so that was very like that felt very unfulfilling for me so that was not like a situation I was trying to be in but it doesn't have to be like that it depends like if you uh, have share the same vision as the head coach, I'm sure it's fine. Or like it can be fun and everything. But for me, that that was just I had I just didn't like that experience. So I was mainly looking to head coach because I was head coaching a little bit, and I just like that setup more than than summer split. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that that makes total sense. Yeah, I mean, I just from limited coaching experience on my own, it it is difficult when players are not interested in uh working with you it, it just makes things more difficult how do you when you encounter a situation like that how have you like approached like working with them when you know there's like a clash of opinions or personalities um so when i was the assistant coach it was like kind of like i let me i just like flagged it to my head coach and if he wanted to take the fight i would let him but like as an assistant coach i did i wasn't really interested in going into like a our huge argument because if the head coach didn't believe in it and the player didn't believe in it there was didn't feel like there was any point nowadays i would say the best way is to bring it up in a review or something something you want to change and then like 
it probably won't go that well if there is something you fundamentally disagree on. But then just like have the discussion and then later on just do a one on one or something like that, uh, where you like lay it out where both people are like totally relaxed and then just like try to be reasonable about it. But you know, if someone so usually everyone want to learn and they want to improve, so uh, guess something like that would be good, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes to total sense. Richard, pivoting over to you. Uh, so I'm going to go even further back than 2022. Uh, so back in 2017, you were coaching for Dire Wolves. Uh, and then, uh, technically, I think, but then you got a gig with uh, Chiefs right after that. And then eventually made your way to the Mammoth team uh, that made the Worlds play in way back with uh, Clutch and UOL. Uh, that one where everyone went uh, two and two. So going from coaching in the OPL and that world's playing stage, now all the way here uh, to North America, first under uh, with FlyQuest Academy, and now on the main LCS team, how has that, what's that journey been like? Has it been like a wild roller coaster? Has it been like a easy, smooth climb? Uh, how would you describe that journey? Uh, I'd definitely say it's on the tumultuous side. It wasn't uh, smooth sailing at all um actually a small correction is I, I think it's it lists me as a positional coach for direwolves in 2017 but i actually didn't coach them i just went uh, straight to chiefs and that off season is uh i mean a lot of things happened but um basically it was kind of unfortunate and then i ended up coaching chiefs um and then yeah i guess the the world's run was like really unfortunate uh, all the games were winnable um and then Funnily enough, on, on Clutch, I think we had, like, Andrew was, uh, uh, my current GM was the GM of that team back then, mm -hmm. and also yeah. Tanner DeMonte, uh, our current performance coach, was the mid laner back then um, <laughs> on, on Clutch. It's funny how it all comes back together eventually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I also played, uh, oh, I mean, I also coached Vulcan last year, who was supporting that team as well, so it, it does always <laughs> come back together. Yeah. Um, but actually, yeah, first... The, the transition to NA was actually not that easy for me. I was fortunate enough to have uh, very good mentors around me at the time. Um, you know, the, the coaches in LCS at the time, I think it was like Sharks and Kanani, they were always using their free time to help me out where where I needed. And uh, actually, it was like their, their off days. They were using their entire off days to because the, the academy and LCS schedule were desynced back then, right? And... Yeah, I mean, they're they just offering a lot of like mentorship and how to see coaching from the bigger picture. Because um, when I was still coaching in Australia, it was much more of a a brother to the players kind of vibe. Um, mostly helping them with like lane phase, like doing one one v ones with them, um, trying to help them understand the matchups a little bit better. Um, but I was lacking in like so many different aspects of coaching that uh, you know I later found out. But having having those people in the system like really made the transition easy a lot easier for me yeah absolutely that makes total sense. so real fast then so I, I'm, I'm skipping around in our question order list but this makes me want to ask you guys um do you guys have anyone that you take inspiration from or that you learn from in terms of coaching because like a lot of times like players will be like oh i look up the faker or showmaker for like mid lane strategies etc but like are there um players or coaches that you look to or even outside of like esports right um are there like people that you look towards for like inspiration on how to do proper coaching and like how to properly teach people to do the things that they need to do to be able to compete at this sort of level and either uh, one I mean, of you can answer this by the I, way i mean you can share his opinion on this but i mean for me i think it's actually kind of hard it, it's because you don't really get to see exactly what other teams are doing um, outside of, you know, you might have some friends uh, that are coaching another team or some people you worked with in the past um, that are currently coaching other teams. And then you can have some conversations here and there to get an idea of how they run things. But all in all, I'd say it's um, actually not that easy because the, most of the information isn't readily available. Um, yeah, uh, for me, I, I think... Um... I my like I aspire to coach in a way where like I can help the players like actually get better inside of the game. Uh, that's like my my focus uh, because I had coached in, many coaches. Obviously, I played for ten years, and the coaches where I felt like we got the most out was they were able to like teach us something that we could apply in the game. 
so like for me it's just like focusing on that every day uh, mostly on the game and like on their like kind of like the the meat and potatoes of coaching you know which is like the every day the scrims how do you play the game how do you play the game together you know and just really trying to like help the players with that and like so help them to win games basically through that yeah have you guys found that you've got obviously a mix of longtime veteran players and you know relatively newer players to the pro level have has it been the case for you that those veteran players don't need as much like direct coaching they don't need to be told so much what to do maybe more like gentle nudges in like hey we want to play the game this way or have you thought about maybe this versus a younger player maybe needing more like hey when this happens do this when this happens do this um has that been the case for you or does everyone need more coaching does everyone need to learn constantly um yeah p different people need different coaching and like some veteran players could need coaching but i would say the main thing is that like if someone is gonna shot call in the game then uh playing the game in like kind of that person's way just that's just what you're gonna have to do uh so like you can help him try to see the game in like different ways uh but um in the end if he's gonna make the call and you have two different opinions or like different people how to play you're better off trying to make the guy that's not gonna shot call understand like how the guy that is gonna shot call thinks so that it's gonna work in the game so uh that's something like i guess to consider and then some people just take coaching better than others as well so <laughs> i would say that's the main idea let's say like uh like that. and for us like inspired calling mostly so then what coaching could look like it more be like asking him questions how does he think and then telling the other players okay so in this kind of situation we want to like be doing this because you understand now how like uh, the guy that's gonna actually like get the things done in the game thinks so like and then trying to uh, make the other players understand that yeah so <clears throat> while we're talking about the players and like the shot callers FlyQuest has some big personalities especially on the top side uh this split so how have you guys approached uh making the team gel and perform well together uh and buy into this rest uh roster overall and i'd love to hear from both of you on that yeah uh i mean i would say uh as for veterans i would say not all veterans are created equal um some I would in the past, some I've worked with players that have been playing for a long time, but I would almost flag them as fake veterans because they don't possess <laughs> maybe the the leadership qualities or not not even, uh, but more importantly, like their idea of how to execute in a, in a game as well as some other players are. And fortunately on FlyQuest, the, our veterans are all really good at uh, painting a picture of exactly how they want to play the game and that's been really good to work with and so when you have players like this uh i think the coach's main responsibility is to kind of be collaborative with these kind of players um in this in and not coach in the traditional sense where it's like okay it's my way uh or else um yeah yeah then nuke duck your uh your thoughts on this yeah I mean, that's, uh, uh, yeah, I agree. It's like you can help people, but different people need different things. So yeah, in this team, you can help more. Um, yeah, just uh, facilitate them because they have a very strong idea how they want to play and how to make the team gel. I mean, uh, usually we just try to talk, discuss a lot so everyone understands like how each other thinks. And then like outside of the game, we're already like kind of chill. Like everyone here is like, very nice and we don't have to we didn't really have to do like some like team building or crazy stuff to make people get along people just like get along and like to play uh, the game and uh yeah we, we don't have any problems with that well then especially with you nuke duck you have a history with a good amount of this roster you played against inspired and Bwipo, um and then you previously coached busio so for you personally i've been curious how did that um relationship kind of pan out you coaching them is there like some knowledge that you like familiarity that made it easier for you guys to discuss openly when it comes uh to criticism strategy and knowing each other's benefits um or anything else 
Um, yeah, I mean, with, with Alan, I already knew, so I didn't really have to, like, learn his personality or for, like, the way to, like, deal with him, because, like, uh... But for the other two, I didn't interact with Inspired and people much in EU, honestly. I, I just played against them sometimes. Uh, and, uh, like, during 2020 and 2021, I wasn't, like... I was, like, uh, not... It was during COVID and stuff, I don't remember that much from it ever, so... We weren't at the studio and stuff, too, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't really know them, like... Like, I didn't really know them from before, honestly. I maybe spoke to each of them, like, one time or something like that. Uh, but I did know Alan, so I still had to learn how to, like, how they think and how, how to yeah. interact with them. So all that communication was just on the rift with your Q, W, E, and R, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Richard, a little bit ago, you mentioned, you know, some veterans aren't able to provide, uh, like, a sense of leadership. Who would you guys say among, like, the veterans on the team stands out as, like, somebody who has really taken charge and is leading the team, you know, when it's just the five of them, right, on stage, you guys aren't there, they're playing, they're in scrims, they're doing whatever. Like, who is stepping up and being that presence to, like, keep everyone's heads up when they're faced with a difficult situation or make the make a decisive move uh who's who's really standing out in that way yeah in game uh that's a very easy answer it's usually inspired he's the one the strategic backbone of the team in game he's very very good at diagnosing the situation in game and you know figuring out the best way to play things out i think um the nrg loss really stood up because even though it was a very unfortunate start. Um, he was very cool, calm and collected, uh, trying to make sure the rookies in bot lane aren't feeling pressured because of the way the game opened and still trying to problem solve the game as best he can, you know, despite the unfortunate start. Mm -hmm. So uh, that person is definitely inspired. And then I guess for out of game, um, perhaps that's, I would say it's Bupo. He's very, um, I mean, he just really enjoys talking about the game and, um, trying to impose his ideas or oh, actually I, I guess i shouldn't say that word but uh i guess he really <laughs> likes sharing his ideas yeah and, sure you know uh at least making sure other people can consider his point of view um before you know moving on from a certain topic like when, when it comes to like you know the way we execute or just certain like picks in the meta that he really believes in um yeah he's just a very influential person whether it be inside of game or out yeah, that's that's definitely the case. Curly gotcha. is okay. uh, for I I guess the two of you would not know this. Curly has been a longtime Bwipo fan. Uh so when it was announced that he was coming to FlyQuest, or leaked, I think it was first leaked, uh we we got very excited for him because we knew he was gonna be overjoyed at the news. Um one other uh quick follow up. Um because if it's my understanding that when you guys are sitting in the back room, uh, you know, just they're they're playing on the stage at LCS. Uh, it's my understanding that you can hear uh, all their comms. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you can hear the the voice comms as they're going. Um, That's correct. Is there is there ever a moment? And you don't have to specify anything, but has there ever been a moment where like you're hearing them make a play, and obviously you don't necessarily have uh you won't have fog of war so you know what the other team is doing do you ever have moments where you hear them make a call or make a move you go no no not that don't do that yeah uh, every game almost. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah i think so every almost almost every game but right, like right. uh even fog or no fog usually when i watch i like to watch with fog war on yeah uh but yeah pretty much every game like someone comes up with a shitty idea in comms and like oh please don't do that and then so if someone calls it <laughs> off then i'm happy but right, bro right. there is so many like calls being made in a game so many plans being made there will be a bad one every game oh, almost course. so right it's just about like yeah so yeah like i'm cheering for them to like make the right decision you know while right, they're right. like trying to come up with the plan right do you ever uh, like sit there and just like take notes on like okay this was a bad call and this was a bad call or do you just like remember <laughs> at the end of the game like okay why did we decide to do this uh, yeah, of course, uh, like how they reach conclusions is also like important. Like if someone reaches like a plan that's bad, uh, it's good to understand like what got them there and what's like the core issue, you know, like what is the, 
you can't, because we just say like this was bad then you know yeah but same thing could happen again right uh or like if a small tweak and it he would make the same decision but if you like get to the root cause like why did you think that was good then it can be then you can fix it or like get better it's like being back in eighth grade algebra. You have to show your work. The the answer may be wrong, but they don't. It doesn't matter. You have to show your you have to show your work, basically. Yeah, even in scrims, when when they are like making up some excuse for why they did the play, I do do ask them like, how did you think? Like, what did you think about to reach this conclusion? So actually, I do ask them to like quote unquote show their work. Yeah, uh, that's funny, and I'm sure it's the same when they come to you with like, hey, I found this insane new pick, this crazy new build. Let me bust it out. But, you know, you have to be like, all right, well, you have to explain to me first why it's going to work in the game. Otherwise, it, you know, you're just wasting wasting time on that one. Yeah, uh, when they come with a new pick, I'll usually be, like, open to it. Uh, and uh, when it comes to, like, discussing picks, like, I, I don't like, I'm not big on, like, discussing picks, you know. Like, I just believe, like, every, pi every champ, if they got, like, you know, 30 more damage on their main spell, they would be, like, overpowered. So... I just think, like, if the champion is strong, is strong, we just have to see, you know. Like, I, I don't think it can be, like, conversed with, like, words, you know. Right, right. So, so then what happened to the pike? Why did that not make it through? Uh, the pike, uh, <laughs> I mean, he was never planning to play it, but it... Uh, and also they picked Rakan. What was the other game? He was uh, trolling us. Uh, yeah, they had Rakan, so... Yeah. That's what like was did they play? What the, yeah, yeah, the other what one was Blitzcrank, if I remember right. No, no, that was that was against the Sarah Khan. And then we played the next game against Immortals, and we won. And I played Renata. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like there was just better picks, you know. Like wasn't ser I wasn't seriously considering to pick Pike out of nowhere, you know. <laughs> I mean, we might still pick Pike at some point, but not because eventually. Like, of, right. Yeah, if, not because of Twitter. If, if you guys have got your seed locked in the playoffs, you could see it coming out basically. <laughs> Yeah, or like, I mean, Pike is okay, and Alan is a good Pike, you know? So it's definitely like a weapon we have, but it's not something... It's it's a little bit niche, you know? You right. can't just force it, let's say. Well, Blitzcrank, right is, gotcha. Blitzcrank is basically a robot Pike, you know, you know ultimately. it's He's still got a hook, yeah. you know, it's still the same thing. Um, <laughs> doesn't, d doesn't have to be from this season. Do you guys have any, like, f funny memory of, like, a player coming to you know, in the way past, you know, so it's not relevant to today. Coming to you with a pick that was, like, so out of left field, so egregiously crazy that um, that you just, like, you still remember it. Uh, or, like, a teammate coming up with one. Mm. I mean, it always happens here and there, but I don't have, like, one that really strikes out to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's always going to be players that want to... You know, experiment a little. No, fig I mean, just, yeah, just figured I'd ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Dylan, we have to go veins. <laughs> I mean, I did play Wayne mid in LC, in LC <laughs> uh, so like it's not troll to pick Wayne, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I also played against Galio with Wayne. That was the next season. Um, no, I mean, I can't remember much. I mean, it was usually me. Like I played Suna mid sometime, Wayne mid, or Seri mid. Uh, so just something like that. Uh, like, I was gonna uh, say, and th this is a bit of a boomer moment for me, but I I remember your season three Swain when you were on Lemon Dogs. I, I forget oh, yeah. who you're playing at Worlds, but uh, you brought the Swain out, and it was one of the hypest moments ever at Worlds, in my opinion. I I don't know what the results of that game were, but I just remember thinking, oh crap, a Swain. Whoever plays this? Oh yeah, yeah, we lost against T uh, T SKT, you know. Ah, oh, that's right. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. Back then, we didn't go to Korea to practice before Worlds, so I was playing in EU, and that matchup in EU, I was usually beating hard at every Ori, uh, but like Faker was like just way better than who I was playing yeah. against. It's just Faker Ori, dude. There's no, yeah. there's no shame in it. <laughs> Uh, back then, I only played three champs. I couldn't afford to. We couldn't afford to ban Ari. They banned Fizz and Zed, uh and their blue side, and that was my three champs with Ari. Uh, so I just they didn't ban it. Hoped maybe they wouldn't pick it, but <laughs> they actually did good prep. So gotcha. Yeah, I, I would expect um, them to do some good prep. Yeah. Nox, you got a question? Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I, I was just going to move on to the next one, basically. Um. So kind of bring it back a little bit. We, we went off on a little bit of a tangent there in terms of champions and whatnot. Um, I wanted to ask, though, uh, what has been y'all's general thoughts on the level of 
play in the LCS this year. Um, the parody in the league has been really, really good, right? Like as a fan, it's been so exciting. Like, oh, Shopify Rebellion's only beating the teams that are in first place right now. And then uh, all the middle of the pack teams are all within like a game or two of each other. So like in terms of like entertainment and like closeness, it's been super, super fun. But like, what has the actual quality of the play been like? Because I've heard differing reports on this. I've heard people say it's high. I've heard other people that it's been like giga bad. Uh, so I, I just, what are your, what are y'all's thoughts? Mm, I would say the parity is high, but the level is actually not necessarily higher than it was last year. At least I don't feel this way. Um, so about the same as last year? Or? Uh, well, the difference was. Uh, I guess there was more, it was more over indexed towards like stronger and weaker teams in past seasons, right? Like there was like clearly bottom teams and clearly stronger teams. Now it's like a bit closer. Um, okay. So on, but on average, I would actually say the level is in fact lower. I don't know how. Gotcha. About it. Okay. Uh, and I also think that's kind of also because it's like we only play like some BO1s. Like I'm thinking like playoffs or come summer playoffs, there will also be like bottom and top teams. I'm guessing, uh, you know, this season, uh, just it's early and new season and everything. And for the play, it's okay. For me, even like when I was playing, I feel like in EU, the teams are more even back in 2022 i feel like teams are more like willing to fight and play like more aggressive macro maybe and they is a bit more like slower i guess but i don't know if it's better or worse but it feels like yeah, for me it, fe it feels definitely different like I i'm not sure how it would clash if they would play each other so uh, in, then following up on this then, so how much of that do you believe is kind of the shrinking of the LCS, right? We lost two teams, a total of 10 players. You have some notable players, such as like Spica, Licorice, uh, so on and so forth, who are like not in the league right now. Is Are those players missing part of the reason why the quality feels lower or is it something else? Uh, not for me. I, I don't know if the quality is lower though, but like, I don't know, they could probably be better than some of the players, yeah, some of the new players. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. I have an opinion on that. Okay. Um, just, just, Richard, do you have a take? Or? Well, just a quick comment about the two teams being removed. I think that definitely reduces a lot of variance. Uh, you're often playing with fewer scrim partners, so there's going to be, yeah, just, just less a, a smaller gap in general. So I guess that contributes to the uh, the, the parity that we're seeing. Gotcha. So, and then my, my last thing, sorry, I keep interrupting Curly and Sandy on this, but uh, so at some point, do you think it would be better to have those two teams added back into the league? Or are you content with leaving at eight teams? Uh, I mean, obviously more teams uh, is, is just better, right? It's a, it's a bigger league. Uh, your practice partners are more diverse. You don't, there's a smaller chance you get locked into like certain scrim metas that might uh, lead you down a certain trap in thinking or overvaluing certain champions and stuff like that. So I think it's obviously just better to have more teams. Okay. So before we move on to the next thing, though, because I want to keep talking about the LCS real quick is um, with the parity and how close everything is for you guys, have any teams like surprised you in either overperforming or underperforming from uh, your read of them at the start of the season? Because I know <clears throat> if we look at the analyst desk, everyone is completely wrong about a lot of things, you know, and it's a lot more mixed up than what they thought it was going to be. So from, as from the coaching perspective, uh, like, did you have a different read on how it would play out or is this kind of what you thought would happen, mm. would happen with the standings? I didn't, I thought maybe C9 would be better and 100 Thieves also uh, surprised a lot. Uh, so yeah, but, you know, six out of eight reaches playoffs and like there is just we're just talking about a few wins you know so like it's very hard to even say like this was wrong or right at this point but yeah 100 thief just has more wins than i was expecting but that doesn't mean that i think they're gonna do really well in playoffs i think they probably won't but with the B1 and there it yeah. is. Got our headline guys we're good we got our <laughs> on the youtube title Thank that's you, the Doug. log line you guys think How about you, Richard? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I kind of echo the same sentiment, more or less. I did, expected C9, of course, to do much better. Um, 
didn't expect the hundred to do as well. And of course, like being best of one, it's hard to say like if they would be uh, at the same standing if it was best of threes. Um, I I guess another another team I'd shout out. I guess is I, I actually thought Immortals would uh, be doing a bit better because they um, they they show like some pretty good things in in scrim sometimes, and I guess it's kind of. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it does it feels kind of uh, bad for them that they aren't able to translate some of that success onto stage? Yeah. So. Do you guys? Yeah, think, I, I've heard. Do you think? Uh, oh, not. Cloud Nine will bounce back come playoffs because I, they'll probably still make top six. It's kind of difficult to not make playoffs. Do you guys think that come best of fives they'll turn it on and and suddenly look a lot better than they have been? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're still our biggest competitor for for the title yeah i think so too uh, yeah i think so too especially especially if some kind of meta change comes i think that could help them too yeah right now i don't think their meta this meta is that strong for them so but yeah i think they will be very stronger that makes sense all right well <clears throat> speaking on things that some people might not have expected um we are first place, but the two losses, deba debatably, like not the teams that we would expect to lose to. So for you guys, when you went in, visited that, like, were you extra critical? And like, how did everyone feel? And how did you turn it around? Because you, it was never a streak. It was always you lost one, won the next one. Uh, I mean, so when we lost against NRG, we just got outplayed in lanes. Right. To be honest, we got outplayed in all, all lanes, so that was just a good experience, I guess. Um, you know, we are very, our team is very strong in laning phase, like, but on stage we're maybe a bit like nervous. So I think that kind of led us to, and we also learned some things about laning phase from that game. We, we basically got blown out. Uh, we, we 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 did make plays, and we like I was happy with the game, and then I guess SR we kind of tried something. Where we play government for like some smolder comp, and we kind of didn't, and the enemy had a good response. So in the end, our draft was like kind of just like not winning. Like it was like we had to do something very well to win, and we also kind of lost early game. So we kind of just tried something. Let's say I don't know if we would have drafted like fully standard, purely to win. I believe like. We would beat uh, Shopify easily. It's just we tried something new, and the enemy actually responded like way better than what any scrim opponents has done uh, when we were trying to use that comp. So, kind of let's say learn something new about how to use Smolder and how to draft with it. But they ended up changing Smolder, so it's not really like much we can take away from it. But yeah, just kind of like we tried something. It's regular season. We don't care if we go, you know. Uh, whatever like one or two or three or four losses really because it, it doesn't really matter it's better better off try and stuff yeah Richard, gotcha. any, any uh take on that I totally agree with that i think you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into playing the same way uh, and the, and limit yourself to a certain style or just uh, a couple champion picks and it, it's good like we have the time to figure that out uh in regular season and use and um the, the shopify game was an example of that uh i mean smolder being a new champion of course us being the first region we're still what is it like three or four weeks ahead of other regions and uh it was just a champ that we had somewhat limited data on i mean we had some success with it in scrims but but of course uh that I mean, props to Shopify for coming up with a good plan against it. Um, they really, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, like nailed some of the flaws of the champion and uh, utilized the timings quite well. Totally. Is there, because we always hear about how scrim games can be very different from stage games and some teams perform better on stage than they do in scrims. Are there different things that you guys are able to take away from stage losses that you might not be able to take away from scrim losses. Like for one thing, I could think of off the top of my head is maybe like late game decision making. I know a lot of scrims are like you know quick resets, or you know they don't sometimes get as far as like the 30, 40, 50 minute mark. So are there things that you can sometimes take away from a loss or even a win on stage 
that it's harder to pinpoint in scrims? Yeah, of course, because you can see more like the nature of your team and also, yes, late game. If you play an early game comp in scrims, there is almost no chance that you'll get Dragon Soul without like team fighting for it. And then like if they win the team fight, you take Dragon Soul and Nash and it's over. Or if you lose the fight, then they will take Nash and it's over, right? That will happen like almost every scrim uh, if you're trying to like play some snowball. But on stage, I was very worried that the enemy would like, we will have to play out a game where we have to play Soul with Soul, but we are getting outscaled. And the enemy didn't lose the game at the fourth Drake, you know? Uh, so like situations like that are actually rare in scrims. So like, luckily C9 actually plays like kind of human in scrims. They're playing like reasonable, <laughs> and they don't they don't just fight. For, so we actually got good late games when we scrim them. But yeah, that that's a real concern for sure. Yeah, that's something will just never happen in a scrim because the game will be over. Same as the game against Shopify when our bottom lane proxied four waves against the enemy ADC. Uh, we were never in this situation in a practice match ever where this match was like played out because the enemy always want to remake after the, his one CS uh, at level one at three minutes, you know. So then we actually got to learn like what are we doing after this happened? Because after that, we just made so many mistakes and we actually didn't capitalize on bot lane because uh, we never practiced it before. So <laughs> that was actually a good example of that. Yeah, we learned a lot, a lot from that game. You, you got so far ahead that you didn't know what to do with yourself after. Yeah. It's just like, hey, normally we, exactly. we remake after this. It's over, guys, right? It's over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just GG. They're going to. in like my bronze queue, uh, man. Yeah. You know, you lose lane in five minutes and everyone wants to quit the game. <laughs> Richard, is there anything that, uh, that you have per particularly been able to take away from stage games that you don't necessarily see in scrims? Um, I mean, I, I will say that uh, all players. Uh, all players essentially will play with more restraint on stage than in scrims. That's just uh, a universal fact. It, but it's just to what extent uh, they play with more restraint that that varies from player to player. And often the best players in the world can, uh, you know, replicate some of their scrim performances uh, better on stage. And I think I think it just with rookies, for example, like Masu. First couple of games, maybe he didn't feel you know that comfortable uh, playing the same way he does in scrims. But you know, with time, uh, and and it really shows like the uh, from the C nine game onwards, like how much more comfortable he's been playing. So, so um, I mean, I, I just was, also want to flag that it sucks that we're playing best of one and how few games we're we're playing uh, yeah. in general. Because for a rookie like Masu, it's like it would be great if he just had way more way more games to be able to uh, you know feel comfortable playing on stage would you guys be I, I know best of three is like the optimal uh setup for you guys if there was like if riot comes to the teams and says hey we can't do best of three because broadcast blah 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 timing blah 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 but they say but we would be willing to do best of twos because we you know you can kind of control broadcast timing on that and whatnot would best of twos be acceptable for you guys yeah, I, I'd rather take best of two, yeah. Yeah, same here. That, that's actually uh, one of the formats that I uh, that I was playing under when when I was uh, coaching an academy. Yeah. They had best of twos uh, that, that year, and I thought it was fine. Yeah. Much better than... More games. Right and I mean, I'll say, just watching uh, Challengers this year, I've really appreciated having best of threes in Challenger. It's been, it, it's been fun to watch. And Especially when they've got... You know, it, it's a little more exciting because they've got Fearless Draft going on uh, in in that league uh, as well. Actually, I was I just really fast, I want to interject on that. W what are your two thoughts on Fearless Draft? Do you guys like it or dislike it? Do you want it for LCS or is it better for Academy or uh, NACL? Uh, I, I like it more, like, just, like, completely, like, selfishly because it's, like, just more to do as a coach and you can have, like, bigger impact as a coach. So, like, I prefer it, but... No, there's obviously a problem if we're gonna use it and it's not gonna be at worlds, we'll be at a disadvantage. Uh but I think I would have more fun and have more like impact and more stuff to do. So for me I, I I'm all for it. Okay. Richard? Yeah, I kinda of feel the same way. I think it adds an interesting twist to the game. Uh, but of course you run into certain uh like fun functional issues if if globally they aren't doing the same thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. and then you're of course spreading your practice across 
a l much larger pool of champions um, because I mean, inevitably you have to prepare a deeper pool. Yeah. yeah, and then you get to international play and everyone is focused on very specific metas and champions and comps and you've instead of being very good at a few things you're like kind of okay at a lot of things yeah, yeah. well we've been we've been talking a lot about the up-and-comers uh of the lcs just now with nacl and specifically masu you were just talking about so i do want to ask about him real quick because he is on track for potentially rookie of the split and you talked about him his improvement so how have you seen him grow in just these four weeks of LCS? Is it noticeable and has, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, having Arrow as his positional coach, um, <clears throat> how's that kind of worked out for him and your opinion as coach? What have you seen? Uh, he already kind of had a phase where he kind of had like, you know, I wouldn't say stage fright, but that he was really nervous on stage and he played like way worse than what he normally does the first two weeks, but he already kind of overcame that. So that's already like a huge like a dub as a rookie to already be like, uh, oh, having overcome that already. And then in terms of gameplay, I mean, he he's just very, very good mechanically uh, and we're just trying to like, give him some method, I guess, to how he plays instead of just playing on full instinct. So, I mean, yeah, he, he's just, he's a very good player, yeah. Richard, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I'd say from a coaching perspective, it's always feels better trying to contain aggression or, I, I mean, I wouldn't even use aggression as the right word. I, I would say maybe just, uh, you know, incorrect uh, decision making than it is to you know try to encourage a player that's uh you know playing too safe to uh you know expand beyond their horizons and look to take more risks so that part's been great with masu it's easier to mold than it is to craft essentially yeah Ooh. yeah okay yeah that makes total sense Dang. sounds uh, like an anecdote <laughs> <laughs> uh so for you guys working together um as assistant coach richard and head coach Newt Duck. How is it working together? Do you guys see the game uh, similarly? Are there like differences in opinion on things? I'm sure there are um, in, in, you know, some ways are you, how have you guys found like working together with like your system of, you know, leading the team together? Uh, what has that process been like for you guys? It's, pretty chill we kind of just uh, see the game quite similarly so for us it's pretty natural for us to just talk about the game and have like understanding and then we already like know kind of like what direction we kind of want to push the players um yeah i don't know very natural we, we just see the game very similar also we both ex-pro mid players mm -hmm. so you know we have a lot in common yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, I, I've definitely, you know, been assistant coach for, uh, I mean, I guess more hierarchical coaches that value, uh, you know, a, a, more, a slightly more rigid structure uh, in the past uh, that I have, you know, with last year and then the previous year as well. Um, but then with with Nuke, it's it's more it's more fluid, and I'm really comfortable um, just discussing the game with him. And it, I also enjoy the freedom of, uh, you know, kind of applying myself wherever I see fit. And so far, that's been really good. Nice. So would you say the hierarchy is more flat rather than, like, tiered? Uh, uh, yeah. For the most yeah. part, I guess. You just don't have, like, I guess just, I mean, like, I just do the review. And then while I talk to Richard, like, while they're playing the game. And then he kind of, like, helps as well like where he he like uh, yeah he can just do what he needs to do but, or like what he feels like he needs to do when they want to do it totally so what i'm hearing is nuke you're not like dictating you know everything that has to happen it's much more conversational it's much more back and forth discussing uh figuring things out together rather than a one man show i would say so but if like richard had like opinions about the game that I really didn't support I would also like say like you should not say that to the players you know <laughs> so it's like in terms of like uh, you know in terms of like 
how we like do day-to-day -day management structure is very free um but you know it's uh and since we do see the game very similarly it comes natural but if he but if my assistant coach is saying something i i think is like bullshit then i will tell them like you 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 need to stop doing that you know yeah, so but it just happens to be that like we also see the games very similarly so it's very easy yeah makes sense so so is this type of structure um similar to like what it was back in europe at all or is this is this unique to FlyQuest? um i guess the structure is kind of like uh, in it was in europe yeah uh I guess so, yeah, just like, um, just a normal structure for me, like, I, I'm not trying to, like, it's not something, like, for me new, it's just, like, we're all trying to apply ourselves to understand, like, the game the best we can and learn the best we can, that's just all we're, we're doing, you know, that's kind of how it's usually been, yeah, um, so, yeah, I'm not trying to, like, uh, redefine coaching, I'm just trying to, like, or, like, we're just trying to, like, do the best at the game as we can, you know? Right, yeah, no need to reinvent the wheel per se uh richard yeah. you, you mentioned um you know being able having the flexibility to focus more on things that you know pique your interest is there anything in particular that maybe this year that you've been diving into a bit more um and you know if so you know uh feel free to expand on it you know what's been kind of grabbing your attention lately uh i mean i I wouldn't say there's like any one thing in particular, but I, I just, um, you know, I'm enjoying the freedom to apply myself wherever we see fit. Um, uh, and it'll come, things will just come up on the fly when we play, you know, a certain uh, segment like incorrectly or something. And then, or we're just like taking the wrong setup or we, we see the strengths in certain champions, like, uh, or the players would rather uh, see the certain value a champion in a different way. And, you know, I just try to, moderate their views a little bit because sometimes they're extreme or you know maybe just incorrect in general right right yeah, that makes sense um all right i think does that wrap everything up on that particular topic sandy does for me unless you've got something that, you know no nah, i don't really <laughs> got anything else on that one i'm all good over to all you right. um before the show, we, we were kind of talking about the two-week break. I, I know you guys had a couple of days off, but uh, I, I know you guys have kind of gotten back into it. But I, I just wanted to ask really fast, how was the time off for you? Do you think it, like, helped a lot? Um, do you guys feel, like, rejuvenated? Um, and Or are you guys just kind of, like, we're ready to get back on stage? Like, we got to go. Uh, I'm ready to go back on stage. I think, like, we had three full days off or something like that of course i was we were i was in the office doing some things but uh yeah i mean scrimming is fine but in the long run it's boring right so yeah we, we ideally want to get back on stage as soon as we can you know okay get but, but but the days like did they help at all like do you guys feel refreshed at all or i mean i feel good but it's, it's not like i was burned out or anything so i didn't need it but yeah i still feel good <laughs> <Okay. now. laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> Richard, do you have additional comments on that, or? I mean, yeah, I feel the same way. It's uh, it's it's not like there was any burnout in, involved, but uh, you know, I'd cause much rather there not be a break and having to you know just have this. It's kind of awkward just having this like three three mm -hmm. week break and you're coming back playing a different patch. Uh, right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We we feel the same way as as just as fans. It's like all right, cool, getting really into the season getting close to playoffs, stuff mm -hmm. starting to ramp up, and then, boom, two-week break, and uh, we're all kind of left twiddling our thumbs, waiting for LCS to come back. Yeah, not Well, not that's the... that's why we had a show match on Saturday, right, exactly. so we could get more LCS content um, with a bit more flexibility. Totally. Yeah. But let's flash forward, and uh, we've only got five games left in the season, only two weeks left of regular play. In your guys' opinion, who do you guys think will shake out to be the top four in playoffs? And which team are you guys keeping an eye out on? Uh, top team, the teams that will be top four because, like, of the first uh, upper bracket. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I think <laughs> uh, I think probably, like, TL, NRG, C9, maybe. But it could be 100 teams, too. So... I don't know, any of those. I'm not like, looking out for anyone. Uh, I think, like, our 
team has like very good players and i believe in like a best of five like the player skill is a bit more important than in best of one regular seasons because it's like there's so much prep and then you just meet with your prep and then like whoever's prep was like happened to be right or one guy can play only one champ all, all week long and then just pick it the first game on stage and be very comfortable. So uh, I believe like in best of five, the player skill is more important. So I, for me, then I'm looking at C9 to be like a team that has like similar like skilled players as us. Otherwise, I feel like the other teams, we, we should have an advantage on them just from like skill. Yeah. Richard, how about you? Any teams you're looking out for or who you think are going to be in the top four? Uh, I mean, in objective strength, I would have to agree with Nukir. I expect Team Liquid Cloud and NRG to uh, be the better teams come playoff uh, or, or be the, the the top four teams come playoffs. And uh, I mean, it, but it could just happen to be that uh, 100 has like too many wins for them to to be able to get shoved out of the top four right now, but I haven't really crunched the numbers or anything or, or looked into the playoff chances or anything like that yet. So I'm, I'm not really too sure. But I, uh, yeah, I, I can. I feel like they're not going to be as flexible in playoffs. The, so the way to think about it is TL, C9, and uh, NRG are probably the teams you probably want to put the most respect on come best of fives. But at least for the finishing placements of regular season, you would not be surprised to see 100 Thieves stick in it. Yeah, that's right. Just because they're okay. what uh, maybe like the two wins ahead of uh, Cloud9 and Energy right now, right, or something like that. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's two wins. That sounds about right. I, I don't they have the stats on the or anything right now. Uh, yes, Hundred Thieves is indeed two wins about ahead of Cloud9 and Energy, who are both tied with Dignitas. Um, and I find it funny neither of you guys had to take the time to mention FlyQuest, so it sounds like you're very confident that you guys are going to stay at the top of the leaderboard. I mean, we would have to lose a lot of games to not be in uh, uh, top four, right? <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, yeah, we hope so, unless something goes wrong. Yeah. Are, yeah, you, guys, we, we, yeah. are you guys at this point, like, obviously every team, you know, it's the generic answer. Oh, we want to win finals. We want to go do MSI. We want to go to world, stuff like that. Um, how, like, how confident would you guys say you are? Do you feel like, you know, if finals were happening, you know, in like a week or two and you were in it, doesn't matter what opponent, like, would you feel confident that you could go on stage, knock it out of the park and move on to international play? Or are there still things that you would like to start like shoring up, making sure that like there's some more foundation laid before um, getting to that point? I would like some more foundation before that. Yeah, I think our like our players are good, and they're a lot of times playing against like players that are kind of worse than them, so they're kind of getting away with a lot of stuff. So, uh, so I think that stunts our macro growth a little bit. So I would love to like I don't know if they go on stage now in finals tomorrow, they can win, but I wouldn't feel like that confident about like our macro at that point, you know. Uh, and some champion pool we should also work on. So, I don't know. I, I would like to have a little more time. That makes sense. Richard, how about you? Yeah, I feel more or less the same way. Uh, I think especially with uh, rookie players, it's it's nice having more reps in. Um, it's, of course, like Masu's first time playing at the highest level. So, uh, additional games is always nice. Totally. Do you guys feel um, the... There's obviously no big arena for spring finals um you know playoffs is going to consist solely of being in the lcs arena does and i you know i know you both have had big stage experience either as a player or as a coach um is there like a difference that uh we might see in you know oh it's just a normal like you know going to the lcs arena no big deal versus hey we're gonna go step on this huge stage in front of 10,000 people um is there anything there that like might make it less important less interesting uh for you guys yeah i mean it's just more fun if it's in, like in the arena right um 
I don't know, like, for us as coaches, it shouldn't, like, matter for our, like, our input into the team. Right, but yeah. for some players, it can make a difference. Like, some people, they get, like, a lot of energy from the crowd or something like that. Uh, so, it could matter. I don't know how it will impact our players, but it definitely will be less fun, that's for sure, than, like, uh, a full-stage uh, arena. Yeah, I gotcha. feel the same way. Functionally, our, our jobs will be the same, but... Uh... There's, there could be some excitement that just uh, doesn't hit the same way as uh, playing in a huge arena. Totally. And uh, final question, at least for me. I don't know if the other two. I, my final question. What do you guys most enjoy about being a coach? Like, what is the most enjoyable thing that you find? What do you love about the job? I love, like, tactical, the tactical aspect of League of Legends. You know, like, the... Um... Yeah, tactical and or strategy wise and competition wise, like that's where. I, but also, also feels very good when you're like part of a team and like building towards something together. You know, the camaraderie also. Yeah. Uh, feels good. So I guess yeah, that. Uh, and for me, I think just the most rewarding part of it is uh, the sense of achievement when your players apply things or you feel like you've made an impact on their career and their level as a player. Uh, and then, you know, of course, if the, if they end up winning as well, that that's just a cherry on top. It feels very rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense to um, me. I was going to say, I, I don't have anything else. I, I also don't want to keep you guys too long. I know, like I said, it's I know it, you guys didn't have a day off, but normally it's your day off. So I kind of want to let you guys get out of here if you have other things you want to be doing tonight. But uh, we, we, had, we had a day of yesterday. You don't have to think about us. But yeah, if, they, if, if, uh, if, that, if that's it, then that's it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we're uh, all out of things. I do have actually have one more thing. I just saw uh, in our <laughs> Twitch. I have one more thing. Uh, somebody uh, is asked it from us, Numi? No. Well. Oh, red, uh, red. I, okay. I mean, I do have something from Numi. I had something from okay. uh, Red as well. Uh, Nukeduck, uh, how do you one v one against Jensen uh, at all for like practice? Mm, yeah, I have. It occasionally happens. Um, <laughs> what's your what's so, your uh, win rate against Jensen? <laughs> my win rate. I mean, we just we don't want we want for ego, you know. We won't yeah, want yeah. to test like can I with this champion like push you or like who wins, you know. Right, right. Uh, so it will be like ah. Uh, um, some champions like I just like mid has so many champions so he is like good, really good on some and then there is some champions I'm more experienced with I can teach him how to how I think I can play like laning phase in a different way or something like that right uh, so then or I could help with that matchup but Richard could also do it because he's also like uh, he's also like your grandmaster or challenger mid main so we both kind of like do it and uh, bottom lane tests a lot with like Richard plus Arrow or Arrow plus Bippo against our bottom duo, you know. So it's kind of just like if someone is like, oh, I really need to test this matchup before like stage like uh, or something like that, then we have a lot of people that can like help out with that. Makes sense. And uh, do you, I, I know both of you have gotten into Champions queue lately as well. Uh, I believe there was a matchup recently where it was basically four FlyQuest members including coaches versus another uh flyquist member so how's how's the champions queue experience been from the coaching perspective i mean we got in uh, good games <laughs> but it's down now because no one else than flyquest plays so right now uh, it's shut down uh yeah. so even when there were games there was yeah like seven flyquest uh at least so uh i don't know i had fun just testing like some new champs and whatnot so yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of just gaslit into playing because uh, no one was coming up there and, uh, the, the players really wanted to get a game going. Um, and no one really wanted oh, to play man. top lane because, of course, it's top lane. Right. But, yeah. but it was it was fun, yeah. It was fun while it lasted. I resent uh, that. in houses. Nice. Yeah, Richard was fiddling top in all the games. Uh, so, uh, so. Yeah, I was basically just Richard was just on his own. Wasn't, uh, didn't have anyone in queue. Makes total sense. So. <laughs> totally, totally, mm -hmm. totally. Well... I think that is going to do it uh, for us tonight on the show. Uh, we're so thankful for uh, both Nuke Duck and Richard, not only for being on the show tonight, but for the, the coaching performance and all the drafts that they bring, uh, all the great stuff that they're doing for the LCS team right now. Coaching the number one team in North America uh, at this time, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to see them take it 
all the way uh, to the LCS Arena for finals. Uh, can't wait to see. Hey, I'll be there. <clears throat> yes, uh, Matt is going to be there. Uh, Curly. Uh, oh, wow. you managed to snag tickets. Are we doxing yeah. names again? I did. Hey, uh, not actually. So, <laughs> not, uh, Numi, I, I got to do, like, I'm jumping the gun on the shout outs. Numi is the biggest homie uh, when it comes to securing tickets because she DM'd me when the mysterious reappearance of seats happened mm. before she posted. And I just instantly bought one so i'm, I'm gonna be a couple of rows back uh cheering as little as i can when fly quest um you know three o's whoever else like has the misfortune of facing them in finals perfect nice well we'll uh we'll expect <laughs> to see you on the stream uh which will be very exciting uh but for the rest of you uh you can turn tune into lcs in a couple weeks uh but guess what uh, you can keep on tuning into Flight Check, and we're so thankful that you tuned into this episode. Uh, week five, couple uh, week and a half away at this point, uh, and we're excited to get back to the LCS. And when we get back to LCS, you're going to want to be following the show on Twitter for all of our reactions and thoughts to those games. You can catch the show at Flight Check Crew, myself at Santos DB, Knox at Knox War with two R's, and Curly at Curly underscore. Double Q underscore. Do make sure to hop into the Flight Check Discord as well. All kinds of esports discussion and otherwise taking place there. From FlyQuest Red to Melee. Shout out JMuck for fifth place at Genesis X this past weekend. Uh, and CSGO, or CS2 now. Uh, it's not CSGO anymore. Uh, all the other fighting games. Everything that's going on in the FlyQuest world. You can talk about it in our Discord. So make sure to get on in there. And if you missed any part of this episode, the VOD is going to be up on YouTube tonight or tomorrow morning. If you're watching that and would like to catch the show live, we broadcast the episode on Twitch, usually every Monday night, usually at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at twitch.tv slash flightcheckcrew. Uh, Nuke Duck and Richard, I'm going to come to you first. Any shout-outs or plugs or final thoughts uh, before we wrap up? Nuke, how about you go first and then Richard? Oh, uh, not much, just, uh, you know, we're doing our best here, so, like, thanks to everyone's, like, watching and cheering for us. We're gonna try to do our best. Awesome. Yeah, same, same, yeah, no particular shout-outs, but, uh, I mean, uh, thank you guys for hosting this, this show and having us on here. Absolutely. You guys both have, uh, Twitter, uh, I believe. Do you want to shout-out your Twitter handles real quick so that people can give you a follow? Uh, Sure. Let me check real quick. <laughs> <laughs> As he has to look it up. <laughs> yeah, just Nuke Ducks is actually very simple. It's just at Nuke Duck, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of just like a full-time lurker on Twitter now. I don't even post anything. But if you really want to follow me, you can. Uh, it's just Richard underscore underscore SU. Perfect. Love it. Uh, Nox, going to ask you next. Any shout-outs or uh, final thoughts? just sh shout outs to Noob Duck and Richard thanks for coming on guys uh, looking forward to the rest of the split um, shout out to Curly for getting a LCS finals ticket that is dope and I'm excited to see you on stream um, sh shout out Sandy you know what you just do this every week you you're, you're a bro you, you handle all the <laughs> stuff that goes on production wise so I'm shouting everyone out here good Perfect. job guys keep it up uh, Curly how about you any, any shout outs well, so aside from shouting out Numi for uh, helping me out in securing that LCS finals ticket, um, I uh, I want to uh, shout out um, <clears throat> my phone for uh, not struggling with Wi-Fi at that exact moment because it does that sometimes. Uh, so really did that. No, I also want to shout out uh, bot laners for being what makes or breaks my game. And so uh, yeah, dude, honestly, like I... <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, guys. Oh, no, worries. no, it's, okay, going, it's okay. on, but, going on in the background, you know. And shout out to the scrims for happening, you know, <laughs> during the show. But no, actually, a big shout out, like I said, <clears throat> or kind of like retweeting what you guys said to Nuke and Rich. I really am thankful to have you guys here. I like getting the coaching insight. So you guys are amazing. So shout out to you guys and FlyQuest as a whole. Perfect. Uh, for myself, <clears throat> real quick. Shout out to FlyQuest Red, uh, both the Valorant and CS2 teams. Uh, Valorant team making it to the main event for Game Changers, uh, for the first main event of Game Changers in North America. And the 
CS2 team picked up their fourth win in ESEA and will actually be raiding their match right after this, so be sure to stick around on the stream for that. But four wins means that they are staying in uh, advanced division for the next season. So good to go on that front. Uh, now it's all about gaining uh, some good playtime and experience uh, heading on to the next season. All right, that's all for us. We will be back uh, in two weeks. I don't think we're going to have a show next week. Uh, two weeks to discuss uh, LCS, how things are going. I think week five will have happened by then. So for now, I'm just going to say stay safe out there. Do not forget to hit the head on the nail, and we'll see you all very, very soon. Adios, everybody. Have a good one, guys. Yep. Bye. See you guys. Easy home.